February 24th, 9.41am, District Court Defendant Lobby number 2. Hello everyone, Triple S back is my Phoenix Wright Destiny Trilogy. Last time we used Luminol, which revealed, which can reveal wiped away blood, and then we used the Fenton Caprity Kit we got from uh, Edgeworth, but was given to him from Emma's sister Lana, I think, uh, to figure out that a bloody handprint had the fingerprint of Jake Marshall on it. Uh, at the crime scene of in the police department evidence room thing, whatever the place is called. So somehow he's connected to the murder, it must be. So let's see if he's in court today. What do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And the different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. She's wearing the red muffler. I apologise for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek a capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana! Don't tell me you... Much to my regrets. I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Sky. Huh? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belonged to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Mm. I apologise well my voice. I haven't been awake for very long. February 24th, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 9. is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defence is ready, Your Honour. The prosecution is... <laughs> huh? I'm afraid you'll have to do... Uh, you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. That's not physically possible, is it? <clears throat> What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Hmm, <clears throat> wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. <clears throat> Today I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be his, an admirable trait? Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness at the day to the stand. For his first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Mike Meekins. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I am Officer Mike Meekins, sir. My occupation is, um... That would be murderer, sir. Uh... So you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You've got to believe me, sir! Uh... Actually, what we'd like to hear from you is, Sir, I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir? Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I am part of a generation that must be taught what to do, sir. 
can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Here we go. Crime report, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life. Then I... I did it! After that, I passed out, until another officer smacked me awake. Huh. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you. Do unto others before they do unto you! That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted, and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defence may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. This is the one time, actually, where we do press everything. So, let's go. That's not my normal duty. I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. Press. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transfer process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I re relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? Okay. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. Nice. In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here. Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir. It's 49895966. That's my number, sir. I see. <laughs> but the number 49895966... It's shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see, so it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Data added to ID card record. Okay, that's good. I was only doing what I was trying to do, sir. I was only attacked. Press. So you were attacked. Can you please tell exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir. A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. Did I actually read that one right? I can't remember. I have no idea. I actually read that properly. I fought for my life and I, I did it! What exactly did you mean when you say you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. Uh, <laughs> sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming manoeuvre. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood. And then... The next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir! After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offence, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head too. 
I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The Blue Badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honour. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning, sir. The Chief... Delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room! Objection. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? Now how's this gonna work? I guess they put the music over it so that you're not just watching a completely silent video. Because... I doubt... Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that in that... There you can see a fishing pole. There's also the metal detector that we used in Turnabout Goodbyes. I completely forgot to mention that. Ooh, the glove fell out. Did the, did it, was that the music in the original game? I can't remember if there was actually music in the original game over this video part, or it was just silent. Ooh, oh! Oh! Oh, smart. Oh, he goes to sta- Ooh! That looks a lot more visceral than it did in the original game. And I say the original game, I mean on the DS, the emulator version that I played. Oh, there's Meekins knocked out. Poor guy, wow. And there's a bit of cloth hanging out of the thing over there as well. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings still within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? <laughs> <laughs> sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire Criminal Affairs Department, sir. The CAD. It's the Blue Badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Security video added to the court record. Yes, well, anyway. This tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter, uh, someone in the evidence room, and some sort of activity did take place. Your Honour, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that alright with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir. As you wish, sir. Okay, so, another testimony. Here we go. We've only got to do one part of it. Mystery man. His face can't be clearly seen in the video. But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean... The victim at the crime scene would have had to have been Detective Goodman. Very well, the defence may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Right, so we've got to go to Statement 5, the last statement. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it and press it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Press. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir, if I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. 
I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir! Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defence can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? I believe there is a problem. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honour, I have a proposal. Yes, Miss Edgeworth? I propose we have the defence point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. You would want me to point it out. Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. You set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? Who? Ah, pause. Right, where have we got to go? I'm going to go to 1431. Oh, I can just hold down the A button to do this. What am I looking at here? Oh, there, this light's on. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins. Sir, do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprints. If it's a match, the light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. light is on already, which means it's open. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind to a little earlier. That's my attempt at doing reverse talking. But doesn't actually say anything, so don't reverse it. There's no hidden messages there. Hey, you notice the light? What's this? It's already lit. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Ah! Order, order. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh, well. Just go to show. Novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honour? Yes, why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honour? Yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, <clears throat> maybe something like jam the system sensor? Something jam the sensor? Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well, let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. Whee! Here you 
comes. And we'll pause here. And then we go to 43. There it is. Get it right on there, the glove. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Silent this time, though. Where's the music gone? See, I told you. I told you! <clears throat> it's so creepy when it's silent, that thing moving. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when the doors are opened. We often fall out and roll great distances when I open my car door, sir. We can't be sure that item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In... inserted? I wish the music would come back. <laughs> I miss it now. This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chucks me. The object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But the crime scene... There just might have been something that fits the description. But sir! By insulator, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defence please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the locker door? Well, it's pretty flippin' obvious. If I can find it. Rubber glove. I found this near the locker. A thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 Incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir. It would have been so, sir! <clears throat> order, order, order. So are we to believe then that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honour. What do you mean, Miss Edgeworth? The defence has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir? Me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. This is a joke. Very well, begin your testimony. I'm going to amend my guide. I think this is the last testimony for this part. For this video. And then we're back in the witness room again next time. Mystery Man, part two. There's one other thing that proves that the man was detected Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. And an ID card is used as a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. An ID card record. I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honour. 420! The ID card used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, huh? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? The, uh, this particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Lost my voice for a second then. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> there were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let's move on to the cross-examination. We go to statement four. That's pretty much all I have to do. Yep. One, two, three, four. 
uh, and we present. Where is it? Uh... Aha! Plus, I plus report. He lost something. His ID card. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Teddy Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Teddy Goodman was not carrying his card. Order, order. So now, what does this all mean? It could only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. The man Officer Meek as he counted the evidence room was not a Teddy Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order, order, order. Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defence. Bravo, Mr. Wright. Bravo. Allow me to summarise the defence's arguments. At 5.15pm on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also a fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, th that is... Well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? A the moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This is going to end well. Well, well, it seems you've finally realised exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Miss Edgeworth. The defence has already done the explain explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... so... The real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot, at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Ms. Lana Skye, the defendant. The evidence was compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment uh, the defendant used a murder weapon. Ah! I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim of the Meekins encountered. And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something or else, Lana. What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Object! Objection. One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. But that locker! There! That locker! It's... There's no things sticking out of it. Until it cuts back here, and then there is. We still not pointed that out yet. Look, see? The cloth. We've not pointed that out yet. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. 
defense demands further exp examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incidents at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Who do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testify, what is his or her name? Marshall! Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. Prosecution agrees to defense's request. Since he was responsible for gathering the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honour. Court is now in recess. Oh, we've got some more talking to do first. February 24th, 1132 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma, you always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I, I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? <laughs> You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, Detective. You better be, pal. Hey. Hey, hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor's guy. That's okay. So, have you bought what I asked? Oh. <laughs> you mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you, the Chief Prosecutor, are a witness in that case. This guy was a witness? It's all right, incident files received from the sky. Little boy said, little boy, take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murderers. No what? Now that I brought you your stuff, you're just going to ignore me? Emma? But why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know. Unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark Killings. The Joe Dark... No, no, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma, wait! She ran away! Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out here. Can't you just go chase after her and make sure she's okay? <laughs> Jake, Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. No, 
Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. Better take a good look at this file. To be continued! Ah, so next time, we will be talking to Jake Marshall. He'll be the witness. I think it's just another three more testimonies. One short one, and two pretty long ones. And then it's back to some more detective work. <sighs> that was interesting. To do the whole videotape thing uh, on the Xbox compared to the emulator version in the DS. But we managed to get through it. Luckily it was able to like, skip forward and I had to like, quickly pause on a specific point. But yeah, that was good. That was good. So thank you all for watching. And I shall see you all next time. Good. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you decide to subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing and ding that bell to be the first to hear about my new videos. Thanks again and I shall see you all next time. Good bye.